So code-wise, we um, for the music actually very straightforward implementation. When you enter a hub, we'll uh, kick off the the music engineering-wise uh, from a script, and then as we're moving through the volume triggers, we have triggers. Uh, 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 as you're moving through the world, sorry, you have triggers set up to to change for different areas, and then we're passing through, as much as said, switches and states for the con uh, for the context. And in the combat, we uh, calculate a threat level based on the, the difference in level between your character and the enemies that you're facing. That can dynamically change the music here. So post-release, actually, we had, did have something uh, interesting uh, to do with, uh, uh, in the Blood and Wine episode. And one of the conversations that we had initially when, uh, when I joined, uh, I was talking with Marcin uh, about what sort of crazy features we would like to have in our in our games, and one of them was something the sound designers had been talking about for a while. As, as Krzysztof mentioned earlier, the idea in the books of Geralt is that he is uh, so accomplished uh, at combat that he's balletic when he's fighting. It seems like uh, he's dancing almost. And so the idea was, what if we could have the combat and the music synced together? Uh, which is a tricky thing to achieve. So we went away and thought about it, and we came up with a solution which is actually similar to the solution that the Play Dead guys used. Um, and we uh, asked for the callbacks from, from Wise, which is a really powerful feature. And uh, we got the AI to wait on the callbacks in order to make their attacks. Now, this was uh, challenging to persuade the AI designers that we could affect their combat and, and not completely break their design, but uh, once we showed them how it could work, they got excited about, excited about it as well. So the idea behind this is that we're looking for predicted sync opportunities. Whenever we get uh, a, a grid event or a bar event or a, a beat event uh, coming from WISE, we will predict when the next one will be. In the uh, case of uh, bars and grids, we <coughs> actually predict a number of beats ahead, so that every time we receive a beat event, that updates the timing information, so that we don't get any drift between, say, uh, a grid event might be 10, 12 seconds away. If there's some fluctuation in, in the time of the game, then uh, uh, the sync could, could change there. What's really important is, uh, as we said, we can't break the combat. We can't have uh, a, a monster stood there doing nothing as it waits for some big event to happen. And so uh, on the AI nodes that we, we created to uh, check the condition for the, uh, this, uh, this music sync, there was a time limit. This is important. The, when it, whenever the uh, combat is happening, there are always cases where there is some random element to it, which creates the variety in the game. When you have, whenever you have a random element, then you have an opportunity to try and sync it. Because if there is going to be a sync point happen within the random amount of time that you were already prepared to wait, you have a chance to make a, a sync happen. Originally, we were a little worried that by doing this, we would uh, create something that was a bit cartoonish, that was uh, very exaggerated. But actually, we found that we couldn't push it far enough. We couldn't go crazy enough, let's say, to, to, to make it, it look bad. Uh, so let's have a little uh, look at how this ended up in Blood and Wine. So as you can see, uh, we have different levels of events for a very big attack, like this big stomp attack. As the monster's coming in, we're having that uh, synced to the grid. And for smaller attacks, we have this synced to, uh, to either uh, beats or, or bars. And when it, when it happens, I think it's very effective. Often when we're syncing on, on a grid, because we have maintained this musical phrasing, we will have a, a change in the music. And I, I think the feeling that you get is, is almost like we've responded somehow with the music to what was happening in the game, when actually it's the, the other way around. We think we, we could take this further. This is an idea that has, has scope to be pushed further. Again, 
time limits. We made two games uh, last year, both or two episodes, but both the size of, of full si full full size games. So there's limits on on how how much time we had to to spend on it. But considering it was a an idea that we thought was impossible to start with, pretty pleased with uh, that we managed to get get some some implementation of this into Blood and Wine. Mm -hmm. So, guys, I suggest that we stop here uh, because we can go like ages without uh, with Witcher.